Hey, my friends, this is The Art of Prepping. Hope everyone's doing good. Today I want to talk about phones and our sometimes overuse of them. Uh, some of us have actual addictions when it comes to uh, internet use. Uh, you know, some of us are just hooked on uh, purchasing things off of Amazon or watching Netflix videos constantly or uh, just being on social media, and, and there's just a lot of problems. The phone is an amazing piece of technology, but it also can really mess you up, really distract you from living your life, and it really can be something that is a negative. Even though there's a lot of positives of what we can do with the phone, a lot of people don't have the ability to say no, or they don't have the ability knowledge or the skill set to uh, modulate from an unhealthy behavior or activity to a healthy one. So I have uh, eight tips here today, eight tips to help us to get to a point that we are not um, using the phone in a way that uh, can be problematic. You know, this is just a starting point. There's a lot of other more technical ways uh, to really limit us, but I'm just trying to be real simple here. So first, in most smartphones, it's really easy to find this uh, for the most part, at least in my phone, it was really easy. And it's typically in the in the settings, um, you can go and, and look into the phone and it logs uh, or even tracks the the amount of time that you're on the phone over a period of time. And in my phone, it tracks it like per week and per month. And it gives you the, the hours and minutes that you're on the phone. And then it also gives you uh, your data usage. And so you can kind of track this over time and get an idea of like how many hours do you spend on the phone and how much data are you using? Now, now, the data can be a little bit uh, looser in terms of an indicator because if you're downloading, uh, like, you know, some heavy, um, dense information, you may actually just kind of have a, like a lot of data transfer, but you may not be on the phone a lot. So, uh, but it's just a one data point. But for the most part, look at how much time you're on the phone. And uh, that would really kind of blow your mind. Uh, for me, it's it's always surprising of how much time I'm on my phone. And so I, I am at this point, you know, now it's trying to really pull back quite a bit. Uh, number two is to simply turn off notifications to things that are uh, non-essential. It's hard to do this because there's a lot of times that you want to be notified if your favorite YouTube channel, like The Art of Prepping, <laughs> is uh, putting out a new video, right? And you want to you wanna catch that. And so there's a part of me that's like, I don't know if I want to really do this, but but I've done it myself and I, I, I am currently doing it. That, uh, besides the actual ringer for the phone and the notifications if I get a text message, everything else pretty much is turned off. And that's really helped me a lot. A lot of people they're not even aware that they can just turn off the notifications, but you can, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to do on most phones. So you might want to look into that. The next tip here is to declutter your phone's main page. Some people call it the home page or home pages because sometimes people have more than one screen that is, you know, that has all the apps on it, you know. And uh, so you want to go in there. And what I've done is, is I've kind of created folders and I've kind of just dumped a bunch of my apps into like a folder and it really kind of cleans up the the main page, you know, on my phone. So it's like there's only just a few apps or a few folders and that's it. It's it's very clean. That's helped a lot. So it's not so tempting when you like glance at your phone or if you have, you know, a phone call and you and you get done with the phone call and you kind of look at your screen and you see, oh, look at that. I can just check my social media or something. It's really good not to have it right there so you can see it. So just reduce temptation by decluttering uh, your homepage and to try to get rid of the apps uh, so that you don't immediately see them. 
And so put them in folders when possible. Tip number four, and this is going to be like uh, very difficult for a lot of you guys. Uh, I know it was difficult for me, but, you know, I did it and it's a good thing. And is to remove social media apps off the phone and uh, make yourself manually ha have to log into all your social media. It's even better if you can just get, <clears throat> excuse me, get rid of social media. Like, just go ahead and just close down your Facebook or Twitter or MySpace or if people even use MySpace anymore. But just get rid of that stuff. I mean, that stuff just kills your time. Now, if you have a business and you use that as part of like a business tool, that's different. And I'm not saying it's totally like bad or wrong to have social media. I mean, look at us right now. We're on YouTube. But... It's one of those things, though, that, that social media can really burn up your time. And um, I've noticed that there's a lot of studies talking about how it kind of keeps a, a certain type of person away from having more social interactions. So you don't want to fill your social needs with social media, if you know what I mean, because there, it's not the same, you know. So if you want to keep social media... Just don't have apps that you can just, with one touch, log in and, and see and, and be able to communicate with others. It's a lot better just to keep it so that you have to log in manually and, and go that route. Tip number five is have a phone-free day. Now, this is something that I do every once in a while. I used to do it once a week, uh, but now it's almost like every other week. So I need to get back to it. But yeah, it's a phone-free day. And I would encourage it once a week, you know. Uh, some people do it even more frequently. Uh, I have other people that just can't do it. Like, they're just um, just not able to. They just can't do it. They don't want to, really. And so they might be able to do it once a month. But doing doing it at some level is better than doing it not at all. So a phone-free day. And when I'm talking about this, if you have a family, do it across the whole family. Just Just have a set date. So if it's like once a week, for example, it's like on a Saturday, let's say, you just know that everybody needs to turn in their phones Friday night. So when everybody wakes up, the phones are already put away, right, in a location that's not that easy to get a hold of, you know, or get, get access to. And then the whole day ha is organized and planned to some degree. And so you have some structure. And so you're not just like bored out of your mind and tempted to go find your phone. And so, yeah, this is a really good thing right here. A phone-free day can really kind of uh, bring back the days before cell phones, especially for us that, that remember those days. You know, if you're just a little bit older, I mean, you'll remember that. You'll be like, man, you know, we had a whole different lifestyle um, before the days of cell phones. And to be honest with you, in some ways, they were better days because they were not only just more simple, but you are able to be, in some ways, more creative. And so uh, I think that should be promoted. Tip number six, this is something that I try to do a lot, is that when my battery gets down to 50%, I go ahead and just stop whatever I'm doing and, and just, um, just basically just stop using my phone until I can charge my phone back up. And so I call it the 50% rule, but I know it's probably not something that's well well known or talked about because, I mean, it's something that I made up. Uh, maybe other people call it that too, but I have heard other people talk about it in different ways. Some people have it like when it gets down to 60%. I've heard some people say when it gets down to 30%, they stop um, and they charge their phone. And that kind of gives you like a forced break of anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour, because, you know, most phones can charge within an hour if it's totally, you know, uh, the battery's dead or if it's really low. But it, it gives you like a, a kind of like a, a reason to break away from your phone, and then you may be able to stay away from your phone for the rest of the day or for a good period of time. So for me, it's the 50% rule, but, you know, it's up to you if you want to make your own number. You know, maybe for you, you'd want to shoot for 60 or 65% rule. So that's uh, tip number six. Tip number seven is to set time aside for phone use. So instead of just always trying to avoid using your phone, have time 
that's you know written out in your schedule. I mean, that other people know about. That's just phone time. And it could be that when you get home from work, you spend maybe an hour with your family, you eat supper, and then after supper, you have 30 minutes to an hour to do whatever you want on your phone, you know, to, to catch up with people and social media, if that's your thing, or to watch a couple YouTube videos, maybe some of mine, I don't know, <laughs> you can watch mine, I'd appreciate that, and also, you know, maybe you just want to play a game. I know there's a lot of people that love various uh, games that they've uploaded. And I'm not really into the whole games on the phone thing. But but if you are, maybe that's what you want to do. Um, and maybe you're like more like me and you like just to kind of just play around with um, apps and, and, you know, create things. You know, one of the things I like to do is just kind of make little videos, you know, and sometimes I put them up here on YouTube. But you know, it's whatever you're into. Sometimes uh, I just listen to music on my phone. But have set, time set aside. And also have a, a time that when it gets to a certain time in the day that it's the cutoff that you're done with the phone. Unless you need to make a very important phone call, you won't use the phone. So, like for example, if, normally what's what's kind of re- you know recommended by most people that are into you know, health and stuff. And they would say like two to three hours before bed, no electronics, just so it doesn't keep you awake uh, or make, make you have a difficult time going to sleep. So if you normally go to bed at 10 p.m., then maybe like at 8 p.m., you just say, I'm done with the phone. You set it down. Maybe you put it in the charger, you know, or you just set it aside and you're done. So that's, uh, that's going to be really helpful. So that's, um, That's part of tip number seven. And lastly, at tip number eight, you can just silence the phone and and just, I mean, just completely silence the phone and and it won't be tempting. If you're kind of doing something else and you worry about being distracted by your phone, because we know how it is. We get a phone call when we're not expecting it and we're right, right in the middle of something like we need to do, you know, or should be doing and boom, and, and you were like, oh, I got to take the phone. Okay. So you do, or you have a text message, you know, and you just go ahead and you just, you know, you answer the text, but before you know it, you're answering another text from another person, or you decided, well, I'm going to call someone, or I'm just going to surf on the web for a minute, or go to my favorite website, or I'm just going to spend 15 minutes and play this game on my phone, or I want to listen to just a little bit of music, and before you know it, you're lost in the phone. And sometimes this happens to me, um, you know, on YouTube, just searching for videos and just, you know, I, I get down the rabbit hole. And before you know it, I'm just totally lost. Um, I used to do this a little bit with Netflix, but I really have not been able to find much that I, I, I like anymore. Because Netflix, and I've talked about this recently, has gotten so dark in its content that I kind of don't have any interest with Netflix recently at all. And so whatever it is, though, that for you, that's more of a vice that, you know, it's easy to slip into just by not having the phone to do anything crazy. And I know I talked about earlier turning off notifications, but when I'm talking about silencing the phone, I mean, just like silencing the phones, like so you don't hear a ding because you have a text message or you don't hear the phone go off if someone's calling you. I mean, totally silence the phone. I mean, even if you want to just turn off the phone, literally just totally turn the phone off. Uh, that's good, too. Uh, a lot of people don't like that. They're just like, well, what happens if there's an emergency? I need to make a phone call real quickly. I may not have enough time for the phone to, to reboot and turn on. I don't know. You know, there was a time period, once again, that we didn't have cell phones. <laughs> and so... <laughs> I mean, it's amazing how people have like this really crazy anxiety if they leave the house without their cell phone. And um, I, of course, just out of habit, carry my cell phone when I go somewhere. But recently, there's been a few times I was like, whatever, I'm just going to leave it. Or I've sometimes forgot it just because I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about things I need to do, some errands locally, and I'll just run those errands. And then like on the way home, I'm like, huh, I guess I left my cell phone at home. 
Now, I don't really recommend doing that just because there's a lot of unexpected things that could happen. I mean, you could your car could break down. You could have a medical emergency. Uh, maybe a, a loved one has some kind of emergency and they need to contact you. So it's really good to have a phone with you or at least around you, you know, for the most part throughout your day. But from time to time, you know, if it's, you know, if you can really kind of have a backup system in place and you kind of have a strategy to deal with an unexpected thing, um, whatever that may mean, you know, mean for you, um, it's nothing really wrong with going somewhere without a phone. You do take a little more risk possibly, but uh, let's just say this. Once again, we, we did this for <laughs> most of humanity, you know. Uh, we didn't have cell phones, and we survived somehow. So I would say if it's just going up to get some groceries and coming back home, maybe just once in a while, purposely leave your home um, without your phone. And especially if it's just like within walking distance. I mean, that's real safe. You don't have to really, you know, be too concerned, I would imagine. I mean, yes, things could happen once again between your house and the grocery store or even at the grocery store. Uh, but, you know, every once in a while, take the risk, you know, live, live dangerously. Right. And I've I've actually kind of was like a little surprised how even I felt when I when I realized I didn't have the cell phone. There was a moment of like of anxiety and almost like borderline terror just for a second. And then I'm like, oh, I'm okay though. It's like before I realized it, everything was fine and everything is still fine. So I think that we do need to realize that we, we don't have to like cease in functioning. We don't have to just like shut down and uh, just become some type of dependent creature and they can't function without a phone. Um, and when we realize that we're much more, you know, capable of handling situations, even if we don't have a cell phone around, that's good. That's very empowering. That's something that we really need to look at. And so the cell phone, yes, it's very cool, but no, it's not always needed and it's not always good for us. And so I hope this video was helpful. If you have other tips, uh, that you would like to share uh, to help break the habit um, of cell phone addiction or overuse, feel free to share that in the comment section. Uh, once again, there's a lot of other tips out there that I am aware of. Uh, some of them were more technical, like you can get apps that actually manage your usage time that will actually limit you, you know, forcibly limit you on how long you can surf the web, for example. And so there's a lot of other things like that that are, that are more technical out there that you can get into. But these eight here are just real simple that you can deploy even if you have uh, lower levels of motivation. And um, so let me know what you think about this. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.